Okay, the next major conflict that we're going to have to look at is a conflict that's in Afghanistan. Now, what I've done is I've split it up into two sections because we need to look at it in two different parts. We need to look at pre-2001 and we need to look at post-2001. And for those of you that are not sure what happened in 2001, well, we've obviously got the attacks on the Twin Towers of the World Trade Center um, of 9-11. Now the reason why we're looking at it pre-2001 as well as post-2001 is because I think it's really, really important for us studying geopolitics, studying geography, to be able to understand the history behind some of these different conflicts and to find out some of the different things that happened. Now before we can start, we need to know who the major groups are that are involved in this particular conflict. Now you can see from this bit of paper that I've got there, that I've split into different sections. We've got the USSR, or the Union of Soviet Socialist Republics, otherwise known as modern day Russia. We've got the United Kingdom, and we've got USA. Uh, we've got the DRA government, which is the Democratic Republic of Afghanistan's government. And we've also got a group that's up there that you'll probably see me spell in about a hundred different ways, uh, but the Mujahideen, um, which we'll talk a little bit more about later. Now in terms of the conflict before 2001, we're going to use that as our starting point and we're going to go all the way back in history to 1978. Okay, now 1978 is particularly important because in 1978 um, the powers of the Communist Democratic Republic of Afghanistan took control of Afghanistan and took control of their government and their policies and the things that were happening. Now really, really important to look at is this word communist because communist is vital in terms of understanding some of the different allegiances, some of the different alliances that were in this conflict in the lead up to 2001. Firstly, we've got the USSR, okay, which we talked about a little bit earlier, and we've got the DRA. Now, I've put a little love heart in the middle because they're allies, they're friends, simply on the basis that they're both communist countries. Now, what you've got to remember is that this is a time um, where the Cold War was still waging on between the United States and America, between Western powers and between communist powers. Um, so I've put kind of underneath it the USSR, and then obviously they're not particularly um, in love with um, the United States of America. However, despite this, they did sign a friendship treaty after um, the Democratic Republic of Afghanistan's government took control of the country to say that um, the USA would give permission for the, US, the USSR, for the Russians, um, to give um, aid and give support to the new government of Afghanistan to try and help their development. Now, the sort of aid that the USSR gave um, to Afghanistan at the time uh, was um, essentially military aid. So it wasn't really the sort of aid, perhaps, um, that we were hoping for, that we were looking for. We're talking about weapons and we're talking about arms. Um, and the USSR were pretty intent on being able to stamp some communist authority on uh, Afghanistan and be able to make decisions within the country. As a consequence of that, the United States of America actually scaled down its presence in the country. Okay, now not everybody was keen on this, uh, this new communist state that had been established in Afghanistan. And we actually had a little bit of a resurgence from Islamic conservatives. Um, so we're looking at strongly um, Islamic, very right-wing um, believers. And I've put there kind of a little political continuum, although it's very simplistic. We've got the Soviet political ideology to the left, um, and we've got to the right the conservative ideology um, of the Islamic um, insurgency um, and I've put Mujahideen there in the bottom right hand corner because they're going to be really really important as this conflict starts to develop. Now when we talk about someone as being conservative we do tend to think of them as being on the right of the political spectrum um, and they've got very very opposing political and social ideologies perhaps to that of the USSR. As a consequence of this insurgency or this uprising from these factions of different militant Islamic groups within Afghanistan, the USSR increased the troop numbers in the capital city Kabul and also in other areas of the country in an attempt to try and quash or to try and quell um, some of the unrest that was happening from or as a consequence of this Islamic insurgency. Now, obviously, naturally, the Mujahideen or these Islamic conservative groups actually started to increase um, their fight against the USSR um, and kind of began to embroil the whole country in a very, very bloody civil war um, that lasted for many years and I guess to many extents still hasn't, be, it still hasn't finished um, even to this day. 
Now we talked a little bit about the alliances earlier on in the video, but you've got the UK and the USA um, with their disliking for the USSR. Well, obviously, naturally, at a time when we were trying to quash communism from the world, at a time when the Cold War was waging on, where political and military tensions were very, very high, the USA and the UK actually decided to help out those Islamic conservative groups, the Mujahideen groups, um, by supplying them with weapons. And there were cases of giving them stinger missiles, um, and there were also reported cases of United States shooting down Soviet helicopters in an attempt to help these Islamic rebels to take control of Afghanistan away from the USSR, away from the communist Russians. Because of all of the bloodshed, the United Nations called for a full withdrawal of the USSR from Afghanistan. And we talked a little bit about the consequences, and we're going to look at lots of the different effects in lots of detail. But essentially, you've got 5 million Afghanistan, uh, Afghanis or Afghans that are displaced um, into neighboring countries such as Pakistan and Iran. It's important to remember that Pakistan and Iran are also heavily conservative, they're also heavily um, Islamic countries, um, which is going to be vital as we start to look at how this developed after and post 9-11. We've got a key date here, 1989. This is when the USSR actually withdraw from Afghanistan. But despite this, there's still war in factions within the country. There's people that side with the communist ideology of the USSR um, and the Democratic Republic of Afghanistan's government. Um, and there's also still these um, wildly Islamic, very conservative groups, um, such as the Mujahideen, that are still fighting to take tribal territories, still fighting to take control um, from within the country. The civil war wages on and eventually in 1992, I've got that Ohio Taliban, um, the Taliban essentially take control um, of Afghanistan and the Taliban stemming from some of these Mujahideen groups um, backed with the support of Pakistan and the Pakistani government uh, which obviously has strong Islamic ties and strong Islamic allies within the area. I guess the sense of irony that surrounds this is the fact that in post-2001 Afghanistan, the organisation that we're fighting against, the Taliban, the Mujahideen insurgency, were the same group of people um, that we as allies in the West um, gave them um, in order to fight against our then, um, our then sort of counterparts against the Russians. Um, so there's a sense of irony, really, in the fact that we're fighting against possibly maybe our own weapons in this case. Okay, what we'll start to do in coming lessons is we'll start to look at how this develops, we'll start to think about some of the impacts, and we'll start to develop this conflict into the future.